That Great Business Show. Winner, Highly Commended Award, Irish Podcast Awards. Welcome to episode 172 of That Great Business Show, home of great business tips, insights and opportunities on every episode delivered in our commute-friendly package. And all thanks to daft.ie, Ireland's number one property website. If you're looking for your first home or looking to upsize or downsize your abode, make sure to visit daft.ie to find that next place you can call home. I'm Conal O'Mora and Fóit on this episode, as part of our Beachhead USA mini-series, the ultimate crib sheet for expanding into the US market, he may not have the world's biggest Rolodex or contacts book, but he probably does have the best in New York, and the good news for your business is that he's more than willing to share it. If it's for sale, it's on daft.ie, Ireland's number one property website. Whether you're looking for your first home or planning your next move, make sure you're on daft.ie the best place to buy or sell in Ireland. Travel to Connecticut, USA with Aer Lingus service to Bradley International Airport. With the daily flights from Dublin to Hartford, we make business travel to Connecticut easy. Save time with US pre-clearance, enjoy Aer Lingus award-winning flight service and experience the convenience of Bradley International Airport, perfectly situated for your travel needs. Learn more and plan your next business trip at aerlingus.com. Regular listeners will know that we have incorporated a mini series called Beachhead USA into That Great Business Show. Make sure to check out all of the interviews where we've gone into detail on the many difficulties and complexities involved in setting up and succeeding in growing your business in the US market. One man who deserves the biggest, loudest shout out for helping us put these themed podcasts together is Tony Dunn, who is US country manager with the Bank of Ireland based here in New York. Within two hours of contacting him, Tony was straight back to us with many, many top end recommendations of Irish companies that have overcome many adversities in the harsh US business world. He's a man who embodies the true nature of Team GPS. Those are our loyal followers. Tony has been at it for a while and has seen it all. Some businesses succeed and some businesses fail. He has some wonderful insights on doing business USA style. He has a tip on how to save your business a million dollars or two. So do listen carefully. Tony Dunn, thank you so much for joining us on That Great Business Show. Thank you. Delighted to be on. Save me a million dollars. Save me two million dollars. No pressure. Well, uh, start off, probably very obvious to say, but the US and New York is an extremely expensive market. You know, as you say, I've been doing this a long time now. We've seen many through our BOI NYC hub, which used to be called Start Lab. We've seen many companies come over to New York and they come over with their eyes wide open and then their eyes get even wider. They see the possibilities and they're like, if I could just get a slice of this, I'd crack it. The problem I've seen is, though, that those companies don't necessarily fully commit to the US market. So they want to be here, but also they don't want to commit to being here. They want to come over, like if I could come over once a quarter, but still run the business in Ireland, then that will work. And unfortunately, that doesn't work. You have to be here. You have to be on the ground. You have to be out there. You have to get to a stage where people kind of get sick of seeing you because you're at every event, you're at every trade show, you're at every customer meeting. Um, So that's that's always been the hard part. And what's happened then is that people have realized, okay, I can't commit to being there. I'll go once a quarter. That doesn't work. So then what I'll do is, okay, I'll hire somebody local. And one, it's very expensive to hire somebody here. But two, that person that they hire quite often doesn't have the heart, the passion, doesn't have the history of what made this company a success in Ireland. They don't have the emotional attachment to it. So they end up in this world where they're not fully committed to being here. They want to be in Ireland. They hire somebody local. That person doesn't have the DNA of what made the company a success. And then what you hear is six, nine months, 12 months later, you hear this desperate phrase, we're going to pivot. And once you hear pivot, you're like, oh, that's six, nine, 12 months of money wasted. So I think that'd be the one lesson I give 
there are huge opportunities here, but you have to be fully committed to it. And it can't be that you just hire somebody locally who doesn't have it. You either somebody from top management, somebody who's made the, the company a success in Ireland needs to be over here on the ground. And they're the people who will make it a success here locally. But as you say, it could be worthwhile because the excitement of making it, breaking the US is fantastic. But I'm just learning and learning and learning all of the time. It is tough. It is. It's extremely tough. And the problem sometimes is that the market is too big. The opportunities are too big. So you try and be like, oh, if I could just get a sliver here, a bit there, we can do this, we can do that. The companies that I've seen that have, you know, been here, done it and made it are ones who are very disciplined. They're like focused. This is what we do. This is the area we're going after. We're not trying to get the whole market. We're just going after this little niche. This is the opportunity. And it's very hard to do that. As I say, it's such a big market. And especially if you're coming from Ireland, you, you know, you come over here and you're like, oh my God, there's so much opportunities. But those opportunities can be a problem. Very interesting perspective on that, actually. As we know, say we're trying to break into the UK, there are different uh, economies in the UK, London, outside of London, into the north, etc. Is New York, where you're centred, you don't live here, I don't think, but uh, you're centred, oh, you do live here, yeah. it's just nodding at me, is that, uh, is it too small, too big? I mean, it's a fast city, of course it is, but is it a big enough apple <laughs> to bite on, or should you think more East Coast or Tri-State or what? Well, there's a great, yeah, there's a storage company who's trying to convince people to stay in New York. And they've got this great ad, which is you realize if you if you leave New York, you'll have to live in America. And it is true. I, I New, love it. America is such a huge country. It's like sometimes, you know, we criticize some, but even our local staff members, they don't have passports. I'm like, they've never been abroad. And then you realize how big America is. And that can sometimes be the opportunity. Like New York is very different, very expensive, but there are huge opportunities if you get out beyond New York. But you just have to realize that it is just such a big country with huge opportunity. But the states, how they operate, can be so different, can be so different culturally. And By states, you mean separate states separate within states. the USA. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, and the, the difference between the coastal states and the mid states are so huge, so different. So I think if you crack it in New York, there's enough, obviously there's enough of a market here that you don't need to go anywhere else. But if your product isn't more suited for New York, you have to realize that you've got to get outside of New York, then those states can be very different. And it's also very difficult to operate it's not like the EU. These states have different w ways of operating. They have different tax codes, different legal codes, different, completely different jurisdictions. So you need to know that. What do you say to people? Because you, as I say, have been here a while and you've been in banking for even a while longer. Doing business with New Yorkers is different. Yes. And how, what form does that difference take? I think, you know, New Yorkers have this reputation for being abrupt, rude, et cetera, which I don't actually, I think that's a stereotype. New Yorkers on the street are some of the nicest people you will meet. But I think when it comes to business, the beauty is that they will give you a fast no. And they will also expect you to make the ask, ask quickly. So when people come over, and I'm sure you'll hear this from the majority of people you interview, the big mistake they make is they don't get to the ask quick enough. And then they... How quick is quick? Because I love this story. Straight away. Like, you know, you're there, you know, like people in Ireland, you know, you know, it's like wine, dine them and then tell them what you need. No, here you need to have an elevator pitch. You've got someone's attention for the time it takes you to get up or down that building and you need to have them sold by then or not. And the beauty is they will tell you no straight away and you don't get insulted. You just move on and you do your next one. So I think it's extremely different that way. But once you realize it, it's great opportunities. Sometimes, you know, as you say, like we've been uh, true Bank of Ireland NYC, hub. We've built up a big network. We know a lot of people. Sometimes I joke, not only can we make network connections for you, but sometimes more importantly, we can also advise you who not to talk to, who not to connect That's with. That's really interesting. A banker actually saying that? That's very interesting. Yeah, but so, sometimes, you know, there are people out there who will be very interested, who will drag you along, who you can get hopes with, you can spend time, resources, and then you won't get the sale, you won't get it. So as I say, it's back to being disciplined and um, understanding the market, how it works, and realizing that they're not being rude. If they're not interested in your product, they've not interested in your product. It's not for them and move on. Which is fine. You also told me that people that within your hub can work extraordinarily long hours. Yeah, well, I think, and it, this is again, it's back to my point, when somebody comes over, the ones that have been successful are generally the leadership of the company who move over, CEO, CFO, CEO, CTO, whatever it is on that C-suite. But generally they come over is they end up working Irish hours in the morning and then doing the American business development in the afternoon. Um, so quite often you know, I come into the office generally, you know, 8 a.m. and you can have people who've been in there since four or five in the morning 
doing their Irish job and then they're working through the day and then they're doing the networking events at night. So yeah, there's huge opportunity here. But if you ask any of the companies who've made a success of it, they've put in the hours, they've done the hard graft, they've gone to those meetings, they've gone to so many of those network events that think, what's the point of this? Like, what, why do I do this? But the ones who do it, do all that, put it in and they get the rewards. Any insights into where people should base themselves, uh, what kind of companies they should form, uh, any of the, you know, the minutiae of actually setting up a business that you say, watch this, or this is a dead handy hint there? Yeah. The two hardest things are visas, immigration. That's the number one barrier, you know, get, being able to get your visa and not just for you, but being able to get the visa then because to a company then get an E or an O visa, but then trying to get, when you when you get up to scale and you want to bring people over, getting that visa can be very difficult for your staff. So that's number one thing. Make sure you have a visa and make sure you've got a, a very good immigration lawyer and make sure your staff know when they're coming over in Nesta that they don't say the wrong thing, they don't do the wrong thing because suddenly that's them denied for five years or whatever it is. That's number one. Two, and this is kind of weird coming from a bank, Banker, but the other hard part is actually getting a bank account. I've heard this. Yes. It is extraordinarily difficult. Yeah. So once you come over here, first off, your company has no credit history. So being able to get a bank account is extremely difficult. Bank of Ireland, we're not in that business in the US. So unfortunately, we can't help. We can recommend to some banks that do help, but the main big banks do not really want to touch an operating account or lending facilities. So that has been an extreme problem for some people, uh, for some companies that have come over. And it's not one that's going to ease anytime soon, especially with KYC and all that. I was hoping that you were going to give some a little hint or help there because that is that could be the major stumbling block. Yeah, well, it, it depends. Again, I think a lot of people are just using their banking facilities from where they're from, uh, from back home, and then using either credit cards, using um, Swift, using Venmo, using whatever way, using Stripe, whatever way it is to, to be able to manage it until you get to a certain scale. And once you've got a certain scale, once you've got a history here, once you've got revenue here, then the banks will talk to you. But it takes a while. That's great business show. De facto, the revolutionary shaving oil, changing the face of shaving. For the smoothest shave of your life, just add water. No more lathering up or cleaning up afterward. Just add a few drops of water and you're ready to go. De facto's blend of all natural oils hydrates and protects your skin. No more razor burns or irritation. A spa treatment for your face. Perfect for all skin types and lasts so much longer than traditional foams or gels. De facto, a shaving revolution. Just add water. Available from selected pharmacies and from defactoshave.com. Are you buying or selling a home? If it's for sale, it's on daft.ie, Ireland's number one property website. Travel to Connecticut, USA with Aer Lingus service to Bradley International Airport. With the daily flights from Dublin to Hartford, we make business travel to Connecticut easy. Save time with US preclearance, enjoy Aer Lingus award-winning flight service and experience the convenience of Bradley International Airport, perfectly situated for your travel needs. Learn more and plan your next business trip at aerlingus.com. That Great Business Show, winner, highly commended award, Irish Podcast Awards. Just as a curiosity, why would a bank not want to induce or, or, or seduce a uh, early stage company into their bank if, if, if they're going to be huge? I mean, you mentioned Stripe. Stripe presumably came over here at some stage and had to set up a bank account. Yeah, because, yeah, for everyone that's going to be huge, there's a hundred that's not going to be huge. And then, you know, the banks, um, the banks will not be earning fees off these. And um, it's very expensive to maintain an operating account, especially when you've, you know, as I say, KYC, AML, the operational fees and all the rest. So it costs the bank a lot of money to maintain these accounts. So if they're not earning the fees from it, then it's hard for them to justify it. And th that is one thing I'd say here also is, America is such a big country that rightly or wrongly, Americans kind of discard everything you've done before you were in America. So if you went to if you went to college, is that college in America? No. Well, then it's not good enough as an American college. If you have a track record of sales, where? Outside of America, it's not as good as America. Just something, as I say, it can be arrogance, it can be whatever, but that's just the way it is and you have to realize that. And it's the same. So when you go to open up a bank account, if you don't have a track record in the US, it doesn't matter. 
that and, being and really useful. It's That's really, very, very interesting. It's the same. Like when we bring staff over um, on secondment for a couple of years and they go to rent an apartment, generally the apartment goes, what's your credit history? We have no credit history. And then we'll say, you know, oh, well, Bank of Ireland can help you with that. And they're like, who are Bank of Ireland? You're like, we're a 200 year old, you know, bank. And they're like, no, never heard of you. Uh, bank of Ireland, can you get a guarantee from an American bank? That's just their mentality and that's just the way it is. Was I properly informed uh, when somebody told me when you are pitching to an American is that you give your CV first, whereas in Ireland, we ask about old granny and all the rest and then say, oh, yeah, I might have been in college. I might have a PhD from somewhere. But in the States, it's I have a PhD. <laughs> uh, yeah, not your CV, your resume. Yeah, you start off Sorry. with your resume, you build your credentials and then you explain what you're doing. And it's up front and it's no, yeah, the Irish way of the connections or do you know this or maybe that and the way of getting into uh, to build up a relationship through some common connection does not happen here. Uh, sorry, not that it doesn't happen here, but it's not as frequent as it is in Ireland. And that's the nature of the size of the place. How different is it outside of New York? You know, I'm probably not the best qualified to, to answer that because apart from New York and Connecticut, that's where I spent my career over here. But from doing business um, and from talking to people, it is extremely different. As I said, there are very diverse markets out there, which creates great opportunity. You know what I mean? Just because it doesn't work in New York for you doesn't mean it doesn't work in the US. Um, so there are opportunities, but you just have to realize, one, how you do business in each state will be different. And then you have to be very careful of the legal and tax and jurisdictional and no doubt you can advise people or suggest good lawyers and tax advisors and all if somebody contacts you. Uh, absolutely. But I, I would say, though, the best people to contact are the people who've done it. And, and the one thing I'd say is the startups, you know, who startups, the wrong terms, the scale up, I prefer to call them like they're success. They're generally successful startups in Ireland who've established a business, yeah. brought it over to the US to scale. Those companies, they go through the hard graft and uh, for such a big city, the Irish American community is very small. And the one thing about here is that they do try and help each other. And they're probably much more open over here than they would be in Ireland. Because one, it's such a big market over here. So you're not directly competing with people, whereas you would be in Ireland. But two, people have been through the hard graft and they want to pay back. The best advice I could give is contact other startups, go to networking events, go to events like Digital Irish, contact them, see what others have done and learn from their mistakes before you just repeat the same mistakes again. That concept of paying forward, that's big. It is. It's huge. And yeah, and I think, you know, this idea of, you know, just because you made it and you pulled the ladder up, that doesn't exist in the Irish American community from what I've seen, which is great. I think and anybody that has made it, they they understand how, one, how difficult it is to come over here, but also how scary it is. Like when you arrive over here, as I say, it doesn't matter what you've done in Ireland. None of that counts. Your track record's out the window. So you're starting from scratch and you might be somebody in Ireland, but you're nobody over here. So you've got to prove yourself again. So people who've done it and have prove themselves and have made it, they don't forget that journey and what they've been through. So they generally put the ladder down and try and help people come back up. And the, the amount of J-1 visas, you know, students who are finished college over here for a year want to stay here for a year and work. The amount of resumes I get sent, would you consider all the rest? And if I don't have it, I pass it on to somebody else and somebody will pass it on to somebody else because everybody knows that what a great place it is to live, to work, what a great opportunity would be. And they generally try and help people. You conveniently mentioned your knowledge of Connecticut because our main branch is based in Stamford, Connecticut. That's where the majority of the team is based and that's where we do our lending from. And you may know that we've had the governor, Ned Lamont, on and he has been encouraging Irish people to come through and base themselves in Connecticut. Does it really matter where you are based? Connecticut is absolutely gorgeous, beautiful and all. And it's obviously much cheaper than New York. But do Americans care if you're based in Connecticut or, do, do you know, if you want to show that you, you're, you're hardball, that you have to be in New York? No, I don't think so. I think there's an element of faking it till you make it. So, you know, you say you're based wherever they want to hear you're based. You should be based where it makes sense for you from a cost perspective, legal perspective, and just to get the business done. I think it, it, de it depends on the industry you're looking for and something, and it depends on what you're trying to do. There's an element here for the companies that come over, they need to be at networking events. They need to be building a network out, whether it's Irish American, whether it's tech, whatever it is. So there is an element of you can be based in Connecticut, but you'll need to put the time in New York to, till you've built up that network. Now, I know you're a banker and probably it's an unfair question to ask you this, but yet, yet again, I'll say you've been around. Is there, are there sectors or opportunities that you think of those who have come through your system that you said, you know what, we're missing this part here 
I don't know whether it might be food, it might be agricultural equipment, it might be something. I know it's so wide, but is there any little thing when you're sitting in the bath or whatever you do, you're, wherever you do your thinking, you say, you know, I've often thought there's an opportunity there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult question because if I had that thought and I had that idea, I probably <laughs> wouldn't be a banker. No, I, you know, it's, it's funny what we... Well, I generally see is just the nature of business. I see a lot of the fintechs. I, a lot of really, we can make your job smarter. We can make your job easier. We can make it more efficient. I think the companies that are going to really make it are the ones who come up with that idea that other people haven't thought rather than going down through the same path. But at the same time, for example, there are so many Irish bars in the city. You can't go anywhere without bumping into an Irish bar. But people have come over recently and they've thought of it, right, I'm going to do an Irish bar, but I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do it. So you can have, there can be good old fashioned ideas out there that you put a twist on. And those, some people do that extremely well. It's called reinventing the wheel. Reinventing the wheel very successfully. Final question that we ask all of our interviewees is, who would they hire in a heartbeat? Who would I hire in a heartbeat? I have to say, and this is, I find that the secondees that we bring over from Ireland are extremely good hires. You know, they, it's... When you say, oh, these are people working within the Bank of Ireland. Correct. Yeah. 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 I'd say, I'd say why Bank of Ireland has been successful over, you know, we've been here for 25 years and why we've been so successful is because we have a combination of really smart American local kids, but also then we bring over secondments and they help with uh, bringing the culture of Bank of Ireland here, over here, and they help bring the training and stuff like that. And there's two, there's different work ethics between the two. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I think the combination of the two has been great. So I think Bank of Ireland, and this is just, I know, I know it's not directly the question you asked, but I think Bank of Ireland has been a success because of the combination of these two work ethics. So I would, I don't think Bank of Ireland would have existed or would be as good if it was pure purely local American hires. I think the combination of that. So I would continue to bring people over from Ireland. Uh, it's worked in the past and I think it will work going forward. And I'm going to continue with my same question again for a name uh, of somebody that you might just absolutely love to have in your team. It could be a sports person. It could be a politician. It could be a business person. It could be somebody, a writer. It's a tough one. It's a tough question. So who would I think? You know, it might be Michael O'Leary. I, I love him. I, I, I would just love, I would, it would probably be an absolute nightmare uh, from a culture point of view, but I would love to see the, 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 how he would look at a bank and how he would want to change things and how he would change the things we do. As I say, it could be as if I was trying to manage him, it would be an absolute nightmare, but I would love to see the freshness and his take on it. I love that idea of Michael O'Leary in charge of a bank. I didn't say in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony Dunn of the Bank of Ireland here in New York. Thank you not alone for coming on to the uh, podcast, but also for your huge amount of help and joining us on that great business show. You're more than welcome. It was a pleasure. If it's for sale, it's on daft.ie, Ireland's number one property website. Whether you're looking for your first home or planning your next move, make sure you're on daft.ie, the best place to buy or sell in Ireland. De facto, the revolutionary shaving oil, changing the face of shaving. For the smoothest shave of your life, just add water. No more lathering up or cleaning up afterward. Just add a few drops of water and you're ready to go. De facto's blend of all natural oils hydrates and protects your skin. No more razor burns or irritation. A spa treatment for your face. Perfect for all skin types and lasts so much longer than traditional foams or gels. De facto, a shaving revolution. Just add water. Available from selected pharmacies and from defactoshave.com. It's all go like Chrissy Gno on thatgreatbusinessshow.com. That great business show. And that's it from That Great Business Show, episode 172. Great business insights and inspiration. All thanks to our lovely sponsor, daft.ie, Ireland's number one property website. If you're looking for your first home or maybe you're looking to upsize or downsize, do make sure to visit daft.ie to find that next place you call home. Sign up for email updates and we'll send you your own personal copy of the podcast at That Great Business Show. Share like and do give us five star reviews because they all really do help advertise with us on that great business show to engage with our lovely gorgeous incredible audience of entrepreneurs business owners and investors we record here at the dublin south podcast studios where today's studio engineer is lee brennan 
Later, the dynamic duo of studio manager Peter Rice and post-production engineer Neil Horner ensure we remain the world's best-sounding business podcast. So from me, Conal Moran, we'll see you all in the next